What's going on, boys and girls? What's up, world? This is GamerTerry27 from Inglewood, California, and you're checking out Austin John Plays. Austin John Plays here, and today we are going to be doing Korok Hunters. No, just kidding. We're not actually doing Korok Hunters because then this would be part one in a 287 part video. And uh, I'm pretty sure you don't want that because I don't want that, and if I don't want that, you don't want that. Great. Today, we're going to be going over some of the most difficult Koroks is to find in the game. And by difficult, I mean they're either hard to find, uh, the mechanic is very different from everything else, it's e really, really easy to miss, or the puzzle itself is just a pain in the you-know-what. And by you-know-what, I mean but. I'm going to be listing mm, 10, 15 of the ones that I think are the trickiest ones in the game. After watching the entire video, let me know if there's any of them that you think are just as difficult, if not more so, and there might be a part two. I don't know. Side note, if you haven't done any Korok seed hunting, I'm going to recommend it. It's a lot of fun. If you need to find out where Korok Seeds are, go to Zelda Dungeon, look at their map. It's totally huge and interactive and it lists every single thing and you filter it. There's no reason to buy a map or anything else. In fact, like, I have the map, the Korok Seed map, right here. It's pretty damn big. It's, it's bigger than the entire focus area of the camera. You just go to Zelda Dungeon map, it's fantastic. But once you start doing Korok Seed hunting, you're gonna have a new appreciation for the game. You're gonna realize that the developers took all this time to plan out 900 locations, all of them with a little tiny intricate thing to do. And after doing it, you're gonna be like, wow, there's just so much. So much. Just when you thought there was so much in the game, nah, you ain't seen nothing yet. There's so much. So with no further ado, let's get underway. Our first type of Korok seed is just gonna bring us a little bit north of Serene Stable. And this one isn't too difficult, but there's, I think, two or three instances in the game that you're going to find hurdles. And these hurdles you need to jump over on horseback. So let's make our way north of Serene Stable. And just off of the beaten path, you're going to find these three hurdles. You need to jump over them while on horseback. At first glance, coming through this area, you're not going to think anything of them. You're going to think it's suspicious. You're going to look over this little house area. And you're going to have no idea what the heck to do with it. But if you have a horse and you're on horseback and you jump over those three hurdles, Boom, he's gonna pop up for you, no problem. Our next one is gonna bring us just northeast of Hatino Tower, and you're gonna find this little circular racetrack over here. Now, this one, you don't need to do on horseback, but it's kinda meant to be done on horseback, and it's a lot more fun to be done on horseback. So, once you make your way to your area, you're gonna find a whole bunch of little targets. And what you need to do is you need to shoot down all 10 random targets throughout this entire circular racetrack. And while doing it on horseback, it's a lot more fun, especially with the, uh, the remote controls, I had the two separate Joy-Cons during this one. And you're gonna be able to just look around, aim at all of them, and then once you take down your 10th target, you're gonna have this giant balloon that appears above the small cabin next to the racetrack. All you need to do is make your way on over to that balloon, shoot it out of the sky, and then boom, Korok Seed. Number three on this list is going to bring us right by the Shikatha Shrine, which is the Spring of Courage, down in the Farin region. And this one is such a pain in the butt. First, after making your way past all the Lazolfos with the shock arrows, you're going to find this, uh, this little statue here on top of this pedestal. And there's going to be three rocks on three of the corners here. And then there's going to be a fourth rock that's on top of this one pillar here. Now, I've talked to a bunch of buddies of mine, including Blaine's and Mustard Plays, who've already done streaming for 100% playthroughs. And this one is such a pain in the butt. Such a pain in the butt. Best strategy I've found is to use stasis on it, drop a bomb, jump off, activate the bomb, and then shoot a single arrow opposite well, from opposite of where you want it to go. So it's gonna land almost exactly where it is. Now you're gonna take a sledgehammer or a large weapon, I'm using the uh, the Savage Lionel Crusher, and one single hit should be enough to just gently push it over to the exact spot that that Korok Seed is gonna show up in. Great. Our next one, which isn't as difficult, but it gets an honorable mention on this list, right next to the Spring of Courage, you're gonna find this enormous statue outside, and in each of his hands has half of a metal cube puzzle. In his right hand, he's gonna have the actual target that you need to go to, and in his left hand, on the opposite side of the entire statue, you're going to find the other part of it. I'm gonna use Revali's Gale, make my way on over there, 
gliding through the air. We found our metal cube, and now the worst part is, anytime you try to make your way on over anywhere, it's so slopey, chances are you're just gonna fall off. Now, without the Thunder Helm, this is a nightmare. It really is. There are so many Lizolfos here. They're hidden, they're on top of pillars, they all have shock arrows. And anytime that they shoot you, you're gonna drop that, it's gonna go flying somewhere else. But if you make your way in a straight path, you know exactly where you're going. With the Thunder Helm, it's not really that much of an issue. That's the reason it gets an honorable mention, not a real spot on the list. Our next one is gonna bring us to Lurland Village. Now this one, I just recorded this for the video. This is my first time doing this Korok Seed. This one took me 45 minutes. Why did it take me 45 minutes? Well, inside of Lurland Village, you're going to find this little boat right here, the little boathouse guy. And uh, on top of him, there's going to be an area for a stone puzzle. However, there's no stone nearby. So what you gonna do? You need to make your way over to the cliffside behind the boat and then use a variety of weapons to hit it in the exact perfect force and trajectory. That way that rock will go, slide up the railing, and then slide down. You'll see me jumping for joy here for how long it took and then drop that one rock into that triangle, and then boom, bippity boppity, Korok Seed. While you're in Lurland Village, there's a really, really easy one to miss. On top of a house, you're gonna find a palm tree, and there's a single apple in between three palm fruits. You need to shoot the arrow right off of the middle. I thought you needed to only shoot the apple, but apparently as long as the apple is down, in addition to the palm fruits, you're fine. Our next one is gonna bring us right next to Kea Pond, which if you're not familiar, that's by the Tawa Jin Shrine. You're gonna find this giant little plateau area, and then once you're here, you're gonna eventually walk around it, and you're gonna find a whole bunch of luminoid stone deposits. When you're here, have at those luminoid stones, and you're so excited, and then you start running away, you may totally miss this bombable wall. All right, so let's bomb this bombable wall. Boom! More Luminoi Stone, you're so excited, you're so thrilled, you get that Luminoi Stone, you start running away. You could totally miss this rock here. This rock here sent me for a trip, actually just trying to find the entrance to this cave alone sent me mad for a little bit. Our next Korok Seed on this list is gonna bring us to Hyrule Castle. And once in Hyrule Castle, you're gonna walk directly straight from the doorway entrance. Boop, 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 boop. Cut away me taking down that guardian like a boss. Now, I'm gonna use Ravioli's Gale, fly my way on up. Of course, you could climb regular. You're gonna find a pinwheel over here. Take care of the two guardians who are giving you trouble. And then, take out your bow. And in the very, very, very distance, you're going to find this balloon. You need to shoot that balloon. Now, with motion controls on, it's like impossible. I tried this on several occasions. It drove me absolutely bonkers. And then I'm like, nah, there has to be like a strategy, a rhyme or reason to it. So turn motion controls off, and then I just slightly move down the cursor every single time, look for the exact spot to shoot it at, and it turns out that the exact height it needs to be is the wall. When you're lined up perfectly with the wall, one arrow, pop. That's all you need to do. All you need to do. I tried so hard, I didn't know that that's, that's the one thing that needed to be done. But yeah, sure enough, that's your Korok Seed. Inside of Hyrule Castle is going to be a really fun type of puzzle, and uh, your starting flower is a little difficult to find. Well, easy to miss, I should say. This is going to be a flower chase over a bridge. Now this one takes you, without any enhancements or anything, a minute and a half, 90 seconds of consecutive climbing throughout the entire entrance bridge of Hyrule Castle. And then once you finally get to the end, boom. Korok Seed. These ones can be really difficult to uh, to maneuver around. Well, the flower ones in general could be a little difficult just because you can never find where the next one is, especially if they put it really far away and it's not on the obvious path, then yeah, you're gonna have a little bit of trouble. But finding this one just seems like a little bit more difficult than the rest. Our next one is gonna bring us to Cora Lake. This is just south of Lake Tower. Now, once you're here, this one is a nightmare. Now, I've done this one about three or four times, so I'm a little bit familiar with it. If you start looking around the area, you're not gonna have any idea anything going on. But once you start investigating the far side of the wall, you're gonna find a metal cube puzzle. It's so far off in the distance, it's usually cloudy in the area, 
or it's raining and it's a nightmare. Now you need to use magnesis and look underneath the rocks in which you're standing. Underneath the middle of them, you're gonna find a single metal cube. Next, after you're done with that, you need to re-identify the direction that you're gonna be going. You need to set up a whole bunch of cryo pillars and now we're gonna use magnesis again and then shove it over into the actual block itself. This one is so easy to miss for the actual target that you're going to. It's easy to miss for where the block is underwater. It's so easy to miss. Uh, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit here. Let's make our way back to Lake Tower and the bridge of Hylia. Now, to the right side, you're gonna see these small little clusters of land. Let's glide on over there. Now, this one isn't that most difficult, but it really is unique. So I think it deserves a place on this list. When you're arriving to the area, you don't think anything of it. Then you use magnesis and you see all these giant metal cubes underwater. Now you just need to go find the one that's out of place and then bring them over to where the rest of the cubes are. But I just think it's so cool to see that small little magnesis puzzle brought into giant cubes all hidden underwater. And I think that's really interesting. All right, our next one is gonna bring us to Fort Hatino, or Hitino, however you wanna say it, I don't care. Once you're over here, now this is gonna be a certain type of puzzle. Now we're all familiar with the balloons and how they fly around and everything. However, alternatively, you can find these little acorns flying around. And once you find these acorns flying around, they move a lot faster than most of the balloons do. So again, you gotta turn those motion controls off. You need to line up for the exact perfect shot. I'm also using, using a Savage Lionel bow that's gonna give me five arrows at a time, just for better accuracy. Some of these have one, some are two, some are three, some are four. In fact, there's one right by, um, right by the Farron Highlands that it's gonna shoot three arrows that appear like just over the, so it's gonna appear like this, like. Like it's so close, you don't even realize that it's a thing until it's already over. Our next area, we're gonna make our way to the Gerudo Wasteland. And inside of here in the East Gerudo Ruins, this is where the eight giant statues are and the Blessing Shrine is. If you make your way to the southernmost one, there's a Korok Seed on its head. He's not the one that we're going after, no. After searching through this whole, whole entire area, you would look for the obvious things, being on top of the heads, things like that. However, there's one that you're gonna miss. You're probably gonna miss it. There's a really good chance you're gonna miss it. And if you make your way to the, let's call it the, uh, the, the two o'clock one, inside of his hands, there's a single floating balloon. And only way that you can ever see this is being on the hands or being at like a specific spot on the head and the chance of you just accidentally stumbling across it, not great, not great at all. Our next one is gonna bring us Lakeside Stable. That's gonna be just south of Farron Tower. Lakeside Stable's right here. Now Lakeside Stable's horse has a little soul patch, a little bearded beard. And the trick to this is you need to burn those leaves. Now you can't shoot a regular arrow, you can shoot a bomb arrow or a fire arrow. But if you shoot a fire arrow, you can't shoot it straight on. No, you have to be at an angle and you need to get the very, very top of the leaves. Only after you shoot the top of the leaves, it's gonna burn and activate your car seed. <laughs> la la la! Or whatever they say. Damn freaking guys, I hate these things. Our next one is gonna be a combination of several different things put together, and if you make your way to uh, Catino Bay, which is just south of the ancient tech lab, you're going to find one of those puzzles that you need to throw a rock inside of a circle of rocks. Now this one is a little unique because it's super far away, so you're gonna to need to use Cryonis, and then once Cryonis is all set up, go grab one of these rocks, run on over, now a couple things could happen. You could throw it and it could land on one of the far ones or it could just fall inside of it itself, which is hopefully what you want it to do to make your life easier. However, that's not the difficult one. The difficult one is actually this exact same thing except it's gonna be a Kakariko Bridge. Make your way over to Kakariko Bridge and then you need to do all of this from on top of a bridge. And yeah, it looks easy. Trust me, it's not easy. At one point in one of my saves, I've gone through four different full saves of grabbing these rocks, throwing them off, and then not getting it to line up right. But here I am. Boop. One throw. It lands on the ice. Landing on the ice makes your life so much easier. That's literally the best thing possible. I'm now going to grab this rock, 
gently lob it in. You saw it like stall on that back rock and then fall in. Yeah, that is uh, that is the optimal situation for how that can actually go down. And then for your last seed, you're gonna make your way to Gerudo Town and then climb up the palace. Uh, when you're here, I actually found Riju because it was at night, and she's like. Oh, the, the, the sand seal stuffed animal? Don't don't worry about it. I'm not playing with stuffed animals whatsoever. Just just ignore this. Why are you in my house anyways at this hour? <laughs> Next, you're going to just climb your way all the way to the top, and you're going to find your last most difficult Korok seed. Guys, right here is, in my opinion, some of the most difficult Korok seeds in the game. Is there something I missed? Be sure to leave it down below on the ones that you thought were the most difficult to find do or figure out until next time austin john out be sure to like this video and subscribe i'm going to be giving you guys lots of helpful videos in the next following days and weeks till next time austin john out